Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, back at Jimmy's, working on a jumping jack flash. Off camera during this week, we did a lot of little minor things on this that we didn't film. I'll go over those in a little bit. Um, we're really not that far off from firing this up and making some noise. Um, yeah, like I said, it's always little things that take time, and we have been going through that list and crossing them off. Uh, waiting on a few parts. I did get a bunch of stuff in for my Magneto, and I believe tomorrow a friend of mine is going to be coming down and helping me get that all rebuilt so we can get that installed. Waiting on some parts so we can actually get the headers, the zoomy style, swept back up style on this uh, so we can make awesome loud noise. Uh, basically gaskets so we can get that on. Those are really the only parts we're waiting on. Um, Got to make a couple brackets for a rear kill switch. Get the starter completed. Just a lot of little things, guys. But you know what? We're crossing that everything off that list, and it's going pretty well. I would say in the next video or so, probably going to be firing this up and making a whole lot of noise, making sure everything runs right. Um, I had a phone call last night for about an hour with one of the main guys in the history of Hillborn Injection on setting this thing up um, to get it to idle right, to get that set up right and all that. Uh, I'm learning, guys, on the Hillborn side, there's a lot to it with the jetting, how you set the butterflies, all that fun jazz. I got a really cool book from 1971 that a friend of mine on YouTube sent me, and it's got a really lot of good information. I took a bunch of notes. It's just making sure it's all set right. So when we fire this thing up, it has the correct idle. And on top of that, it doesn't dump a bunch of fuel in there that's not needed and dilute the oil. And on top of it, we need that throttle response. I know I sound like I'm rambling really ready to get to work. We got a whole bunch of little things to take care of today, but pretty soon, guys, we're going to be making some noise with Jumpin' Jack Flash, the J&J &J speed machine. With that, let me show you what we've already done off camera, kind of explain where we're at. See you in a minute. Okay, so the fuel system is complete. Um, this thing didn't need a vent, so we already had a port. So Jimmy went ahead and bent a piece of quarter-inch aluminum, and what this does, it helps vent the fuel tank, and that turned out pretty well. Like it. Um, instead of using the fuel log we had planned, I just ended up putting the braided line in here as their main feed. So that's all taken care of. Obviously you can see all the Hillborn injection stuff on the front. That is all done, plumbed, ready to go. Just got to do a whole lot of setup on that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's actually getting there. All the wiring is complete on this, um, except for I got to install the battery. It's currently charging. And in the back, got to make a bracket for the main kill switch on the back. Um, once I get the battery in here, I'm going to go through here and test everything to make sure all the electronics work. Um, there's a bracket we made here for the shift light, and this is to program the tack. Like I said, that's a special tack for a magneto setup. And when we go to get the magneto in and all that, I'll explain all that. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Just a whole bunch of the little things trying to get taken care of. And down in here, working on starter stuff. So, yeah, it's just going to be little stuff. With that, guys, I'm ready to get to work. Seeing a few.
All right, so we got the starter all done. Um, that is an MSD unit. I know it's kind of hard to see in there, uh, but we actually had to make a spacer for this. If you see that, instead of a shim, uh, the way they're saying it's not the starter, but the way our chassis is, um, is real tight fit. Um, that's kind of our fault, but we needed to get that down. It does mesh with the uh, ring gear on the flywheel, so we're all good. Um, might have to put one of those five thousandths or ten thousand shim in it. We don't know, but I went with this MSD starter. Um, I also have one on my Ford. Reason I went with this design here, uh, it's the Dynaforce series. It's a four point four to one gear reduction, so it spins real fast. It handles all kinds of crazy power, and this one is meant for extremely high compression engines. So that's going to work well, considering this thing is 14, 14.2 to one, somewhere in there. So basically, what this thing will do on a 12 volt system, I'm going to go show you something here in a second. Uh, it'll spin super fast, and it's got the grunt, if you want to say, for these high compression engines. Um, everything's wired up to it, but if you notice, this car doesn't actually have a battery on it. So let me go show you what we're working on. All right, so it's a remote battery box that I built yesterday. Um, that's just going to be a toolbox for odds and ends, you know, on the back of the truck. Um, but basically it's two batteries. They're car batteries. They're, you know, 12 volt, if you want to call it. And they're 500 cold cranking amps each. So what you do is you actually wire this in parallel. So what that does, it remains the 12 volts, but it doubles the cold cranking amps. Um, so this will be 12 volts at, you know, a thousand cold cranking amps, which will crank that over pretty well. Um, if you were to right wire it in series, it would double the voltage and keep the same cranking amps. But I think we're on the right track of where we need to be. So that's where we're at is building the remote start battery box. Oh, real quick. I need to show you something pretty cool on how that all works. So and how you plug it in. Jimmy just got done making this. Um, this here, that actually goes to the starter. And on my driver's panel up there, it's got a starter button that's already wired up. So when you hook up your remote battery pack to this, it's got the other end that's gonna come off of that. Plug that in, hit that, boom, she fires off. With that, let's get back to work. All right, so the battery box is done. Now, mind you, this thing is wired in parallel, so it doubles the amperage of the batteries, but keeps 12 volts. Pretty neat, pretty heavy duty, it works. This is actually a little toolbox, you know, so when it's up on the starting line, if, you know, you, you need a tool, and we got some in there. So what happens is, um, it's got 10 foot cables, and it plugs into the car right there. And that goes to the actual starter itself, and I showed you earlier what we had wired. So this isn't gonna fire, but watch this. Hit it, Jimmy. There we go. It works. Pretty slick, seeing a few. All right, guys, we got ourselves a dragster. So how close are we being to done? Well, as you can see, what we got left to do is install the headers. The gaskets arrived at my house today. Jimmy's gonna leak down the injectors. I had a talk yesterday uh with an expert on this and we got a really good book so we got a 
in leak down the injectors. We got to set the idle, make sure all the bypass main jets correct in that and put the mag in. I got a friend coming down tomorrow morning and he's going to help me set the mag up, put the wires in, put the plugs in, headers on. And you know what? We got ourselves a dragster. I'm pretty, pretty happy the way this is turning out. Definitely, I think I nailed the nostalgia look. I'm getting pretty excited, guys. Like I said, this has been a very, very awesome build. I absolutely enjoy it. Jumping Jack Flash. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's definitely a gas, gas, gas. See you in the next one. Later.